whatever God wants you to do, go there and begin to do it. And you see how creative you are, the favor you will get, and how people will begin to be glued to you. But anytime you are on the opposite side, you are struggling. You, you break things. Things are not adding up because you, you, it's a mismatch. Amen. You, know, you don't have the grace in that area. So I pray that today you and I will watch as I will accept the assignment. Amen. And that we make sure that we defend it, we protect it against any whispering, against any counter offer, against any threatens. In the name of Jesus. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this evening. We bless your holy name for loving us and taking care of us. We thank you for your grace and mercies. We thank you for fighting for us and making provision for us day and night. We thank you for all the saints in the kingdom of God, those who are around our Lord. And our loved ones that are around us, our bloodline, our families, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that you strengthen them, that none of us, none of our leaders, our parents, our leaders, our teachers will compromise. This we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we put our hands together for the Lord? Amen. <laughs> so we've been talking about one of the greatest patriarchs. In the Bible, and uh, we, we've been talking about Samuel, right? And we talked about how Samuel was born, how he was assigned to the house of God under the care of Eli, and how the Lord called Eli. You know, the Lord called Samuel, and how Eli was able to coach him, prepare him for him to respond to the call and how the Bible talks about the fact that he was afraid to tell Eli what God had revealed unto him. Because what God has revealed unto uh, Samuel was not something that was pleasant, was not something that was good. So he said, how can I share this information with someone who has been nothing but good to me? Someone who has, uh, for 40 solid years, has been able to... Uh, to lead Israel, and now this is what the Lord is saying, you know, about him. The Bible said uh, Samuel was afraid, amen, and when he was afraid, this is in the book of First Samuel chapter number 3, uh, verses uh, 17, amen, and he said, what is the word that the Lord spoke to you? Please do not hide it from me. Hallelujah. God do to you and more also if you hide anything from me of all the things that he said to you. Hallelujah. Uh, so you see that he was insisting that you must tell me everything. And the Bible said, and Samuel told Eli everything. Hallelujah. So we, it also means that we also have to learn to tell the truth, nothing but the truth. So when we go to courthouse, we are given a Bible. You know, whether you've read the Bible before or not, they will ask you, do you raise your hands? And they will ask you if you are here to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. And then you say yes. Amen. So here you see that the Father is demanding that as a, a child that is being raised to represent God and represent Israel, one of the things that are pillars, one of the things that you can do to, for you to be qualified and to represent God is for you to learn how to tell the truth. Am I making sense to somebody? Because the Bible says in the book of John chapter number four that when Jesus Christ met the woman at the well, and the exchange started. You saw that the woman was talking about the prophetic. He was talking about the promises. He was talking about the discrimination that was going on, how the Jews said they can't go to the other side and then worship. But she's still holding on to her prophetic word. That the, the, the word of the Lord said that a time will come that we shall also go over there and worship. And he said, no, the time has come. The time is now. Amen. So because Christ, the word, the one who make it happen has come. And he said, because you have kept the prophetic word and you've not given up, in spite of all the troubles in your marriage all this year, how people look at you 
and you're still holding on to the prophetic word, guess what? You don't have to even go to Jerusalem to worship God. Wherever you are, you mention the name of God and God will show up. Hallelujah. You don't have to go over there. You don't have to go over there. I am the word. I am the resurrected. Hallelujah. So, so you don't have to worry. You see how when you labor in the kingdom of God, holding on to love, holding on to peace, holding on to the things of God, God comes to you and makes things very easy for you. Wherever you are, I want us to raise our hands. We are raising our hands unto the Lord, and we are saying, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we surrender all to you. Whatever it is that we are going through, in the name of Jesus, your, your, your name will not depart from us. Whatever you have done for us and our bloodline that has kept us alive, we are thankful. Therefore, we ask in the name of the Lord Jesus that Father, O oh God, lead us, guide us, reveal unto us the deep and secret things, and let it come to pass that which we are holding on dearly in the name of Jesus. Amen. So no matter how bad it looks like, keep holding on to the word of God. Hallelujah. No matter how bad it is, keep holding on to the promises of God. Hallelujah. So I like people who encourage sometimes. You are going through difficult times and they will call you and they will just encourage you. But I don't give up. I, heard on, I saw on the platform how one of our sisters said we should live prayer for someone who feels like the world, uh, there's no need for her to leave. But there were some people around her making sure that she didn't do that. And by the end of the day, about, uh, I mean, she texts back and said they were able to manage the situation and the person is safe. You see? So those, that's how the kingdom works. You and I, when we get to a place of trouble, we have to represent the kingdom of God. You understand? So we, she's calling for backup. And the brothers and sisters were praying. But she didn't walk away. She stood there making sure that this person does not harm or hurt herself. Am I making sense to you? So wherever you are, it's an opportunity for you to demonstrate the love of Christ, to demonstrate the power of God, to demonstrate, you know, the, the, the favor of God. Hallelujah. So we want to make sure that at the end of the day, what matters most, what makes people look at us as followers of Christ is when we are called upon or when duty calls, how we are able to respond. Hallelujah. And I pray that you and I will align ourselves so that when God sends us to any place, uh, we will not run away. <laughs> we will ask God, God, what must I do? And then you are so strong that you are able to ask for backup. The reason why we are always talking about good relationship and teamwork is because based the call, your call, your assignment is, is connected to a team. So there, there will be a time that you need somebody to back you up. There will be a, a, a time that you need somebody who is even stronger than you to lead, to lead the charge for you. Amen? You see Ukraine today, they are asking the whole West to back them, to support them, to give them weapons, to give them food, to give them materials, to give them money. They are looking and asking for a team that is stronger than them. And as they are making the appeal every day, they are getting something. And they are fighting with it. They are ready to fight, but they don't have what it takes. They don't have the weapons. They don't have the money. You understand? So now that they are getting it, you realize that they are now moving forward. And they are fighting for their land. They are fighting for their families. They are fighting for your loved one. That's why the kingdom of God, the principles are so vital. You know, you don't want to be idle and take the work of God and lack of understanding, you know, and to the, to the point where you realize that now the good things that you want, the valuable things that you've been working for, others are taking and you cannot take back. I pray that that will not be our portion. Amen? So let's look at how in the book of First Samuel chapter number 4, what happened for Samuel to now take over the realms or the affairs of Israel. Amen? So we have got to a point where the, the, the word of the Lord came to Samuel and he was able to discuss it or share it with Eli. Amen? 
So now, at what point, what happened for the transition to take place? Amen. So let's look at First Samuel chapter number one. The Bible says, and now Israel went out to battle against the Philistines and then come beside Ebenezer. And the Philistines encamped, encamped in where? Aphek. All right? So they are being very specific. So we realize that even do, during time of battle, people are writing things down. They are keeping records. So we, you and I must also be what? Keeping records. We must also be writing things down. Especially things God is speak, what God is telling us and the instructions he's giving us, the guidance he's giving us, the team, the names of people who are helping us, guiding us. We have to write these names down. Sometimes we have to keep these events, amen, these dates down. Hallelujah. So let's go to verse 2. What happened in verse 2? Then the Philistines put themselves in the battle array, the battle array against Israel. And when they joined battle, Israel was defeated by the Philistines who killed about 4,000 men of the army in the field. So here we realize that Israel lost the battle. Israel has what? Lost. So are you surprised that Israel has lost the battle? So far from chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, you realize that there were, there were certain things occurred, certain things happened that was not pleasing unto the Lord. Amen. Certain things happened that was not what pleasing unto know to the Lord. We, ra- we, we, we read on the account of the sons of, of Eli who were ordained as pastors by the things they were doing in the house of God and how they were treating the people of God. God was not happy about it. Amen. And as a father, you know, as the high priest, he could, he got also emotional and only told the sons that I'm very disappointed in you. How many of us do that every now and then. We cannot punish, but we can just say that I am very disappointed in you. But the law is there. The template is there. The standard is there. Why don't you enforce it? Am I making sense to you? What type of leader was Eli? Was he the one that would just tell you that what you've done is not good? Or he, he was the one who cracked the whip? You know? Yeah, there are some leaders that will crack the whip. There are some who they, will, they are the pacifiers. You know, they will just bring to your attention that what you have done is not good. If there is no law, that's fine. But if there is a, a code of conduct that we have to abide by, we have to make sure that we are enforcing it, especially if you occupy a seat, especially if you have been assigned for a time such as that. Amen? For, 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 for if, you, if, you are in, in, uh, if you lead and then you are in charge of a ministry or a department, you have to make sure that you go you, you are in compliance. That's the word, right? You must, be, you must be in compliance. Amen? Hallelujah. So Israel lost the battle. Let's go to verse 3. And when the people had come into the camp, the elders of Israel had, uh, the, the elders of Israel said, Why has the Lord defeated us today before the Philistines? Let us bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord from Silo, Silo to us that when it comes among us, it may save us from the hand of our enemies. So they said that because we didn't bring the Ark of the Covenant, that's why we have lost. So let's go and carry the Ark of the Covenant and then bring it. These are the elders talking. These are the elders talking. So you can just imagine at this time what is going on. There's no consultation. You know, Eli is not part of it now. Amen. People are just deciding to to just do what they want to do. And then what happened? Let's go to verse 10 and see what happened. So the people sent to Silo that they might bring forth from there the ark of the covenant of the Lord of hosts who dwells between the cherubim and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were were there with the ark of the covenant, the covenant of God. You see? So now they are going to bring the Ark of the Covenant. But where is the Ark of the Covenant? Between two people that God is not happy with. Who don't take the way, the things of God seriously. Amen? So let's go to verse 5. Let, no, 10. We are still on verse 10, right? Yeah. 11. Okay, so the Philistines fought and Israel was defeated. And every man fled to his tents, 
there, were, there was a very great slaughter, and there fell, and there fell of Israel 30,000 foot soldiers. Also, the ark of God was what? Captured, and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, also what? Died. So you see that even when they went without the ark of the covenant, they lost. When they brought the ark of the covenant, they lost. <laughs> what the shock. So what are you processing at this time? What are you thinking? What can you apply this, this, this story? What, how, how do you apply it to your own life? Is there something that happened in your life that you can say, you know what? I did it without money. I lost. I went and I invest money into it. I lost. Have you experienced that before? I thought maybe because I didn't have enough money, that's why I'm losing. So now I went and then maxed all my savings, borrowed some money, swiped some credit card, took some cash advance, I, I dumped the thing in there, and I still lost. So the question is, hmm, what am I missing here? Have you asked yourself that question before? You are doing whatever, you know, you know. You are getting the support. The elders are coming. The counselors are coming. You know, the experts are coming. And you are still losing. Have you processed it like that before? Huh? Have, we, have you been honest with yourself that why do I lose in this area all the time? I give it time. I study. I do research. I have the best team. I'm connected to the right people. And I know it's battle. It's time to invest. It's time to harvest. But I try and I lose. This is what Israel experienced at that time. They lost without the Ark of the Covenant, and when the Ark of the Covenant, that represents the glory of God, was dispatched to the battlefront, they lost. And not only that, the Ark of the Covenant was what? Captured. What the shock. Was what? Captured. Are we learning something so far? Amen? The Ark of the Covenant was what? captured. And the Bible says when the ark was captured, let's look at verse 13 verse 12. So then the man of Benjamin ran from the battle line the same day and came to Silo with his clothes torn and dead on his head. Now when, the, now when he came, there was Eli sitting on a seat by the wayside watching, for his heart trembled for the ark of God. And when the man came into the city and told it, all the city cried out. Amen. So, so Eli was a troubled man sitting there because of one thing, not even his children. Hallelujah. Because of the ark of of the covenant. So, you see, our whole life, our all, our whole walk with God, there is only one thing that undergets that office or that defines your call. That makes you relevant. See, you are a living thing because you have breath. Because you are alive. When that your heart stop beating, that's it. You are out. So whatever, what, what, what defined Eli's ministry, identity, as a man of God, ruler of Israel, was the Ark of the Covenant. So when it was not there, he was not happy. How many of you as parents would tell me that, you know what, when your kids went out with your friends and they are not back, you can't sleep and you are, no, you'll be worried. And you'll be texting them, where are you? Is everything okay? <laughs> you, know, you know, till they come home, you are not fine. Sometimes even your spouse. If your spouse is not home, Sometimes you are worried. And sometimes you can sense that something is not right. You can sense. This particular day, you can sense that something is wrong. That was what Eli was going through. He said that something is wrong. And as soon as he saw the Benjamites running towards him, he knew that something is wrong. You can tell there are some people when they are coming to you, you can tell that this is bad news. There are some people, when they are coming to you, you can tell that this is what? Good news. How many of you have experienced that? You can discern when they are coming and say, ah, hey, <laughs> the way my boss is looking at me today, <laughs> I'm going to be suspended. <laughs> I'm going to be written up. Have you been there before? 
Yeah, come to the office. You know this is not promotion. <laughs> you know this is not pay increase. No. You are going to, if God permits, you'll be written up. If you are not careful, they, they can walk you out and say, you know, take two days off. You'll be suspended. That was what Eli, Eli was feeling because at this time, the prophetic word has been released from young prophet called Samuel directly from God. Even though he was there and he was aware of what was going on, the word did not come to him, Eli. The word went to Samuel, the young prophet. So now, let's see how Samuel was able to receive the word and his reaction or relationship afterward towards Eli. Did we detect anything? Did we detect any division? Any tension? No. There was nothing such as that. That's the reason why it's so important, this story is so important, is how we learn the process to become representative of Christ. Hallelujah. We have to learn the process. Let us not be worried about the giftings and then the calling and the assignment and fight over that. Those things are nothing because you can lose it overnight. You can mess up overnight. What can undergird it is the process, the, pr the, the process, the training, the preparation that teaches you how to relate. Because whoever you are taking from has a part to play in your future. Even though you might be greater than the person, if you kick the person out, you are walking into a landmine. And I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that we don't go ahead of our time. We are praying that whatever it is that we, you and I must learn and study honestly, we must be able to speak it the way God wants us to speak it. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. And then use wisdom. Don't say, I saw, so I will say it the way I saw it. Ha. Huh? I heard, so I will say it the way. No, use wisdom. Learn from the prophets. Those who counsel leaders. Learn from people who, who, who can minister to their fathers, who can minister to kings. There are some of you, your, your assignment is to minister to elders. But you don't know how to talk. So you have to learn how to talk to elders, how to talk to parents. The Nathans learned how to minister to a king. He was a prophet, all right. But don't forget that David is also a prophet. David is also anointed. David is the ruler of Israel. So how do you minister to somebody like that when he's wrong? Not on Facebook. <laughs> Not on YouTube. Sometimes you find out that you are wrong on Facebook. Somebody took you to Facebook. Somebody took you to... No, you are not wise. You are not, you are not wise. You don't have wisdom. And it's just a matter of time when you start your own ministry, you realize that you goofed and you messed up. So let's learn the right way, the proper way. Hallelujah. The Bible said our assignment is to raise our children up in a way that when they grow, they don't depart from it. So our job as leaders is to make sure that these teachings, we teach it well, we teach it often, because all of us, we are children of God. We are here to perform a unique task. So every day we must what? Acknowledge good teachings. The Bible says the other day that, my son, you know, do not, do not walk away from what? Good teachings or counsel or instruction. Proverbs 4 talks about it. Proverbs 7 talks about it. Amen? So here, great Israel is falling. Not only that, the jewel of Israel is captured. Because when they hear that Israel has conquered the Amorite and the Hittite and all that, they knew that God was with them. They knew the Ark of Covenant. So anytime they hear that the Ark is coming, the enemies are fleeing. They have now the guts, the audacity to now capture the Ark of the Covenant. And they say, Israel, we are done. Go to verse 14 and see what happens. Keep going. 14. When, when Eli heard the noise of the, the outcry, he said, what does the sound of this tumult mean? And the man came quickly and told Eli. Eli was 98 years old and his eyes were so dim that he could not what? See. Do you know that Isaac was a blind man? Do you know that Jacob's eyes were also, also very dim? You know that? 
So when he was trying to bless Ephraim and Manasseh, the Bible says that Joseph thought he could trick his father. Because traditionally, the first one must be blessed first. So when he was coming, he put who? Ephraim on the left. And then put Man, uh, Manasseh, the, the first one, on the right. Right? And then when he was presenting the children, he switched them. He switched them so that the right hand of the father would be laid on, on, on who? The first son. But the Bible said something unique happened. I believe this took place in Genesis 48. And then the father also switched his hands. He switched so that the father will bless the right person. The question is that why didn't you put Manasseh on the left side and then put Ephraim on the right side because that's the position your father is facing. Why did you switch? But what, what was so touching and unique was why did Jacob also switch his hands? And now the Bible said, and then Joseph was vexed. He's upset that his father has switched his hands and the blessing is going to the little one. And he said, Father, you are doing the wrong thing. You are anointing the younger one. But when you read the scripture, the Bible talks about what? He said, Father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head to Manasseh's head. You see how wild the guy was. He said, no, dad, don't do that. Remove your hands. <laughs> it displeased him, so he took hold of his father's hand. So it wasn't just, he grabbed the father's hand. No, put it here. As if the anointing belonged to him. The blessing belongs to him. Am I speaking to somebody? The one who carries the grace and the anointing, say, bring, let me bless your children. You want to determine who should receive it more. Is, is that not what we are fighting? The battle among ourselves. You just know that there's a blessing somewhere. But you want to dictate how the blessing should be dispersed and who should receive it. Huh? Just like the sons of Zebedee. They went to Jesus Christ and said, Jesus, hey, when you go to heaven, I want to sit on your left side, my brother on the right side. <laughs> you see, that's out of place. You don't pray for those things. You don't ask for those things. If you are praying for those things, very soon you are going to walk into a landmine. You are going to be trapped. Because you are fighting for God's glory. You are fighting for God's power. But God has already arranged the thing. That's the essence of the prophetic. Rebecca told his son, he said, when I was delivering you, you the little one, you were holding on to the, the feet of your brother. And the word of the Lord came to me that the younger one shall be greater than the older one. It is the word of God that matters. So don't fight and try to change anything that God wants to do for you. Just take your time, prepare yourself so that you can become. Don't try to switch. Don't try to compete. Don't try to be jealous. Don't do that. It's dangerous. He went and grabbed. He has no fear. Jacob. Jacob. Joseph, you are anointed by Jacob. Israel. Hey. Are you seeing levels? You see how what anger can do to you? You see what tradition can do to you? You know tradition, but you are not afraid. That, you, see, you see what familiarity can also do to you? Oh, it's my dad. And I'm pretty sure if, if it is us today, we'll say, Joseph, um, it was through me that my father is even alive. He would have died in Canaan out of hunger. It was through me. It was the anointing of God upon my life that my family is safe. So whatever I tell him, that's what he must do. So the question is, what audacity did he have? The man who wrestled with an angel and walks with a limp. Huh? 
Joseph, you went through small things, but when you compare what you went through with Jacob, you realize that you are a small boy. You realize that you are, you are just little. Amen? Say, Father, may I not dishonor my father. Say, Father, may I not dishonor my mother. And say, may I not dishonor my leaders. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Are we learning something so far? The ark is gone. The messenger has come saying that, hey, something has happened. Let's go to verse 19. The Bible said, okay, let's go back to see when 16. I'm here. I am he who came from the battle, and I fled today from the battle line. And he said, what happened, my son? So the messenger answered and said, Israel has fled before the Philistines, and there, was, there has been a great slaughter among the people. Also, your two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, are dead, and the ark of God has been captured. Number 18. Then it happened when, when he had made mention of the ark of God that Eli fell off the seats, backward by the side of the gates, and his neck was broken and he died. For the man was old and heavy, and he had judged Israel for 40 years. You see? But you see, one thing I also learned from the messenger was how he presented the case. Amen? How he was. The messenger presented the case. In verse 16, we see how he addressed, he approached. He said, I am from the battlefield. And I realized, and this is what I saw. What I saw was that we have lost the battle. The Philistines have won. Your two sons are dead. The ark is captured. You see the breakdown. So sometimes you can see something that can traumatize you, but you have to comport yourself. Especially based on the one that you are going to give the message to. There are some people, they are trained properly to the point that when some, I remember when my father died, I was young. And the day it happened, I was at the hospital with him. One day, I just, I decided to go our house was just opposite the hospital, so I will go and take a shower and I will come back. But I'm there every, all the time. I sleep there. So this day, I went and I took my shower, ate, and I was coming back. But then one of my friends was, uh, had a, a small shop in front of the, the hospital. So I was spending time with her and I was just there before I realized two, three hours. And then, one, because I was there for like two months, so most of the guys, the workers, they knew me, right? So one guy was passing by, and then he said, Charles, they, they, need, they need you upstairs. So at this time, we're at the fourth floor. So I just left, and I ran. And I, you know, I took the elevator. I went to the fourth floor. You know, I'm walking to his bed. I, I, I got to the reception area, and there was this nurse that I see here. We are cool all the time. And then there was this serious face that she was wearing. Like, she frowned her face. And she would not even smile. She would not even look at my face. I said, no, what is this? But the way she was walking from the bed towards the reception area, I said, ah, is she bored? Is she upset? You know, is work this, this crazy today? You know nurses when, they are, when the work is hectic. So I didn't say anything. I walked past her, and then they have removed the curtains and all that. And so my eyes, pa. I said, hey, what is this? And it still didn't hit me yet. Still didn't hit me. So I got there. So I'm, I'm now looking. There's no movement. I said, no, this is, this is not true. This is not true. So I started shaking. I get up. <laughs> you know, nothing is happening. I said, I said no. Uh, uh, so the, the first voice that came to me was like, your dad is dead. I said, no. No, no, no. Get up. Nothing. So uh, when I turned to look at those who were around. And it, when I turned, everybody turned 
they didn't want to engage me. I said, oh, so this has happened. And I said, what a shock. So I, I comforted myself. So they came to me, the doctors and nurses came to me and talked to me. And I'm a young boy. So go and, <laughs> go and bring your, your elders. Go and bring your senior brother. So, I, 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 so now how do I go and tell this story? How do I go and tell the elders that this is what has happened? So I took taxi. I went, I went to where they were. I went to their job. And I went to one of my brothers. And I don't know. He, he also, when he saw me, he, was, he, he looked some way. He bowed his head. Because me, the, the two months, I don't go anywhere. Ho- home, hospital, home. I don't go to town. So when he saw me, he's like, what are you doing? Like, in his head, he's like, what are, what are you doing here? So he was talking to a customer, so I waited. And he looked at me. I'm not saying anything. He's also not saying anything. And by the grace of God, tears are not coming. So I'm not dramatizing things. And no, I'm calm. And he's also calm. And all I said was, it is not good. I need you. Is that how I had to translate it? Yeah. It didn't, it, didn't, uh, it didn't go well. Then he said we should go to my senior brother. So he went, and I went back home. You see, so we have, it's grace, but we have to be learning how to communicate better. As messengers of God, we have to learn how to share the good news. If it is bad news, the way you, you share it, can cause heart attack. You see? This is heart attack. He dropped, pow, died on the spot. Because when you read verse 19, go ahead. Now his daughter-in-law, Phinehas wife, was with a child. The Bible said, because of time, the Bible said, when she also heard the news, she was in labor, instantly delivered the child. So there are some information that can hit you and your BP will go up. Hallelujah. That's why we have to be very careful that we, 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 we choose wisely and carefully that we don't walk into a trap. There are some people, they are healthy today, but if you hang out with the wrong team and receive bad news, bad news, four or five times, all of a sudden you are developing something. Am I speaking to somebody? So don't, don't try to always engage yourself in a, in a group of people interested in, in information or, or, or people who are always bringing information that can shake you. It's, an, it's, it's, it's a weapon. It's slowly attacking, activating things. It's just a matter of time. Before I realize, all of a sudden, so I, have, I have BP. Where from it? All of a sudden, I have this. All of a sudden, because of issues upon issues sleepless night. But tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus, any career of bad news looking for you and I, say in the name of Jesus, say in the name of Jesus, say Father and again, preserve, protect my mind, my soul, my mind, my soul in the name of Jesus. He says she delivered the child. And she named the child Archibald. Archibald. Ichabod. Ah, I said Archibald. That's it. <laughs> Ichabod. Ichabod. Thank you for the for yeah. We are all learning. <laughs> Today that was what hit me. Sometimes some people can go and take some people's preaching, take this piece piece of it, and then begin to bash. Because everybody, when you are making a presentation, every, every now and then you miss one thing. You want to say John 10, and then you say Mark 10. It happens. Yeah, it happens. Huh? And then that, the meaning was that what? The glory has what? Departed from Israel. The shock she received. She named the child and said, the, the glory has departed. She wasn't interested in the father-in-law that is dead. She wasn't worried about the husband and the brother-in-law that had, no. He said, the glory has departed. That's why David prayed the other day, take thy spirit not away from me. 
I can lose money, I can lose house, I can lose friends, but there's one thing you and I must not lose, is the presence. That's why I tell people, when you are loving God, salvation entered, you didn't do anything to deserve salvation. It is grace that located you. It is your time for salvation. So when salvation comes to you, don't run to another place. Stay where you were when salvation came. Because that's where the jealous spirit comes. Also, also, I'm not enough for you. What did you do to receive salvation? I came to you. So now that I'm with you, ask me, the Lord, and I will teach you and I will guide you. Am I making sense to you? Sometimes when we are giving the... I see one of, one of my leaders went, when I came back to church, I didn't leave church, but I was there, but I wasn't there. How many of you have been there before? You go to church, you pay your tithe and offering, but you are not there. Your mind is far away. Religiously, you just show up traditionally. So when I came back 2003, ha, my mentors those days were say, sit put. Best advice they gave me, sit put. God is doing something through you. God is doing something. Always they are bringing my attention to the fact that it is God that is doing the thing through you. So the least we can do is to guide you. So sometimes they will come, are you ready? I say, yes, sir. They will give me a book to read. That was it. We are praying for you, son. Sometimes all they do is, are you ready? Yes. Fast for five days. That's it. But what God was doing through me, they didn't try to, they, they don't want to even interfere. You know? And when people are trying to look at you somewhere, you know, they'll call you, son, just don't worry. God is doing something through you. That was it. You know, and then when you are trying to go wayward, you know, one of the things that come quickly when you are at that stage is pride and ego. Pride and ego begin to come in, and then they'll call you, hey, son, you have to be very careful. You have to be very careful. Those were the best advice, and I still pray for those type of advices so that we are not carried away. Because people walk this walk, met God, did powerful things, but each one of them, see how God dealt with them. See how God dealt with them. Especially when it came to that one thing. Some of us, we don't, we don't, we, we are just excited. But we don't know that one thing God does not like is to ignore his presence. Hallelujah. To ignore the presence of God. And that was what caused Israel. Then they ignored the presence of God and they chose other gods, other belief systems, other nations. I said, oh yeah. I would depart and you see that this ark of the covenant, the glory will not be there. I am not there. It will just be an image an image without my presence is nothing. Amen? An image without the presence of God is an adultery. Is that it? A worship of an idol created by man. Amen? It's a mercy. Say mercy. He said the glory has departed. The child is born, and the name of that child is that the glory of God has departed. That's the name of somebody. What, the, what is the meaning of your name? Do you even know the meaning of your name? Sometimes ask your mom, why do you name me? The glory has departed. <laughs> <laughs> huh? So wherever I go, there's always trouble. Huh? People are breaking through. When I get there, ah, they say it's finished. People are getting loan. When I apply, I'm rejected. Huh? Why did you name me the glory has departed? Huh? Why do you name me pain? Hmm? Strange names. So if you are not, if you are not sat, if you are not 
tools prepared. There's some type of therapeutic revelation. You will be walking around saying that the glory has departed. I am cursed. Nobody loves me. I'm not good. I'm not smart. I'm not intelligent. People are looking at me some way. Because you think that you are the one who is carrying the burden of a whole nation. You now represent the shame of a nation. The glory is gone, but there is an, a child name to represent the new identity of a nation. This child, the glory has departed. So when they mention your name, you represent that new form of identi identification. When they mention your name, somebody must say something negative. When your name comes up, nothing good comes up. When they check the social, some people, when they want to, we want to apply for some things and they say, what is your social security? Then you hang up the phone. <laughs> oh, have you been there before? I said, so sometimes we say, ah, Felix, what has this got to do with my social security number? <laughs> have you been there before? You say, ah, what, a, just, my name is enough, my address is enough. The, the number of years I've been at that, this address is enough. I work here for seven years. It's enough. Why my SS number? So it's just a procedure. We are not going to check it by, we, no. Then all of a sudden you hang up because you know that the glory has departed. <laughs> am I talking, am I, yeah, you are a realtor, so you know this. That you can go around showing house to people. People are ready to buy the house. People are talking about this is my bedroom. They are fighting over rooms and fighting over colors. They are choosing their carpet and their lighting system. They pump you up and how they are going to even give you extra cash for being nice to them. And then we run the credits. Pow! The glory has departed. <laughs> Hallelujah. The glory is gone. Thank God it is not Samuel. Hallelujah. Thank God that, you see, sometimes when you go through pain, you can birth something out of pain, and then it becomes your template. If you go through a lot of pain, disappointment, suffering, if you are not careful, what you live for is nothing from God. It's birth from pain and rejection. And when you, you are there and you embrace it, look, if God himself doesn't come, you will hear, but you will not believe. You don't believe men no more. You don't believe women no more. You don't believe nobody, and you don't trust nobody. Because now, you are, you, you, you are, you are carrying a vision that is birth from pain, from rejection. Because there are some times you can tell somebody that God wants to bless you if you do A, B, C, D, and they are looking at you like, please, I've heard that before. I'm going to do my own thing. So it's not the absence of God's word that is making us stuck. It is the label. It is the identity. It is what we have decided to be our label now. But I pray tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Any false identification birthed from pain and suffering from rejection, abuse, and trauma today, let mercy locate you and I. Let that burden be lifted. Let that curse be broken. Let any altar that has been erected, any false gods, apart from the God that has created the heavens and the earth, that gives us breath, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. That's for us and our family. We are exempted in the name of Jesus Christ. We will not live under a cursed name. Let our true identity in Christ Jesus Christ lead us, guide us, reverse every damage that has been done. In the name of Jesus, you are coming out to a place of acceptance, a place of recognition, a place of fulfillment in the name of Jesus Christ. Say in the name of Jesus. Say I've entered 
into a place of acceptance, into a place of recognition in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's go to First Samuel chapter number 5. Are we learning something? Are you learning something? Yeah. We have to learn proper because greater work will you do. God will use you to do greater works. So the earlier you begin to know what it is that you must do and what it is that will fight you and you equip yourself, sometimes you don't have to fight battles. Hallelujah. There are times you don't have to what? Fight battles. If you prepare yourself wisely, you don't fight. You use wisdom. When others are fighting, you are using wisdom. You let them finish fighting and then you just walk and then you take the spoils. Because they are so, they fought and they are so tired that they can't carry the spoils. They can't carry the blessings. But you have not fought, so you can carry more. You understand? Uh -huh. Have you heard of the saying, monkey they work, bamboo they chop? Bamboo is like, I mean, I'm not going to work. Oh. I will wait. <laughs> I will wait for them to, because they are ignorant. The, the word of the Lord said the other day that birds in the air, they don't what? They don't sow. But the Lord feeds them. So God feeds you words every day. Cast visions for you. Give you instructions. Build a team for you. Your job is now to just allow God now to lead that team. So anybody who is coming to let God depart from the team, that person is a suspect. Suspectosis. Today, in the name of Jesus, any suspect around you and I, say, Father, let their weapons be grounded in the name of Jesus. Then the Philistines took the ark of God and brought it from Ebenezer to, uh, to what? Ashdod. They carried the thing and they took it. What happened? Verse 2. When the Philistines took the ark of the of of God, they brought it into the house of what? Dagon and set it by Dagon. Do you know what Dagon is? It's their God. And they also have a shrine, a temple for it. So they brought it there. So that's why when you come here, you also don't joke. Yes, you are dealing with the same people. Hallelujah. Verse 3. And when the people of Ashdod arose early in the morning, there was Dagon falling on its face to the earth before the ark of the Lord. So they took Dagon and set it in its place again. <laughs> Can you imagine? When they got up, they realized that their God is face down. <laughs> <laughs> like in the car knockout. <laughs> Two image fighting. That should tell you that there is a spirit behind every image. Huh? So people say, oh, Pastor, is, this is nothing. Their friend just gave it to me. No. Why did the person give you that thing? That is the, what we are talking about. It's the intention, the motive behind the gift. That is what tie you and bound you. Is it what you bound on earth is bound in heaven. Heaven cannot do anything if you are bound unless somebody releases you or loses you. So how do we become bound? We become bound when somebody desires ill and place a point of contact and gives to you. That as long as I've given you this, let this thing work against you. But the person presenting with a smile, can you give this to your daughter, please? I love your daughter. You say, your daughter, your child should stay up, cry, frustrate you, and, and, and may you lose your job. May you not get up and go to work. May your child frustrate <coughs> Is the spirit behind it. Even though David had worked for the wife, killed Goliath, Ask, what price will be given to the one who killed Goliath? Saul is saying, I will give my daughter to David to just be a snare to him. So the, he has received the gift, all right. But the motive behind the gift is that you will not enjoy your marriage. 
Son, if you insist on marrying this girl that we all don't like, okay, let's see whether you have peace. You are finished. Let's see whether you enjoy marriage. You are done. It is not the gift received. It is the projection behind the gift. That's why we are trying to undo some of the damages that young people, when they are getting married, they say, look, is your father aware of this? Is your mother aware of this? Because there are certain projections that can come from your mother and father that you know what? You fight for 10 years. If God is not on your side, your marriage will collapse. So you, 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 we do statistics. If you survive the first two years, if you survive the five, because they know that the projections in the first two years, if you survive it, then you know that there has been some reconciliation. There has been some forgiveness. Am I, making, am I speaking to some? Because the past can come and bite you today. Am I speaking? Something that has passed the first two years can resurface in the seventh year. Your father, I saw a, a small clip the other day. This guy, the mother has raised him. Now he's, he has money now. He has bought this nice big car. And then now, the mother wants to sit in on the, uh, the front seat. I know you, uh, some of you have seen that. The mother wants to sit in the front seat. The wife also wants to sit in the front seat. The two of them, are, they are fighting for the front seat. I didn't watch the rest, but I said, this is nonsense. I will not even watch to see what the man would decide. Whether you say, let my mother sit there or let my wife sit there. The disrespect we are bringing to marriage today. One right that your mother, honor thy mother and their father and it will be well with you. You are fighting with the sitting position. The other day I was on, on a flight. Then I saw one of my bishop. And I was sitting where the long legs people sit. <laughs> Uh, and we all have the same height. So, and it's the same area. But I have advantage because of long legs. But I realized that there was, because it was COVID, so they don't, there's a seat at the corner, but they put yellow there that nobody. So it's like one person sits here, they, they have some empty spaces. But he desired that corner there. And they said, no, he was, talk, they said, no, nobody will sit there. So now he has to go and sit three seats behind me. And I'm sitting there. I said, this is my senior. I paid. He paid. What must I do? I went to him and said, sir, come and take my seats. And let me go and sit at the back. He said, are you sure? I said, yes, sir. And then he came and sat. And I sat at the back. You see, we have to honor and respect even sometimes if it's uncomfortable. I could have sat there and said, hey, I pay for this seat though. <laughs> this is 10 hour flight. I'm not going to squeeze myself. Let me stretch my legs. Ah. I said, no, this is my senior. This man speaks into my life. He encourages me. This is a test for me. I said, may I not fail this test? Because of comfort. Say mercy. Say mercy. The Bible said, what the shock. They got up, their God was, was laying flat on the ground. If you stand with God and defend the things of God, your enemies will always fail before you. They will always come and confess that, actually, I was coming to destroy you, but I don't know. I think you are the spirit of the Lord, the living God is on the inside of you. I can't help you. So, so can, can I also become a follower of your God? That was the testimony that Daniel had. When Daniel stood for God, they said the one that the spirit of the living God is in him. Therefore, it got to a point they gave up that we will not try to kill him again. They tried to set him up. They tried to just malign him. They tried to do all kinds of things. At the end of the day, when they saw that this man's God, because of relationship, obedience, this man's God, even in the pits, even when the lions were there, he didn't die. They said, uh-uh. His God is powerful. We surrender. Our, our, you see, you can never talk about power until you obey God and follow God's instruction. You can never witness the power of God. Manifesting through you. 
You can talk about others. That's one of the things that is happening to our generation today. We are not talking about how God used us or how God came through for us powerfully, but we can talk about how God is using somebody. How God did it. That's past glory. Hallelujah. We must avail ourselves that others will know that God, our God, your God, as a Christian, your God is in you. It's with you. It's upon you. It's leading you. They that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the Son of God. God has departed. To Israel, God has departed. They don't know. God doesn't depart. He's there. He's just not talking to you. <laughs> Sometimes I look at my kids and say, I'm not talking to you. No, we, don't, we are not talking. They are there, but they are telling their sister that we are not talking, right? <laughs> Sometimes husband and wife can be in the same house one week. They are not talking. I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm the married people, the survivors. <laughs> Let the survivors talk. <laughs> huh? Say that again. That's what's virtuosos. Yeah. They said that, that God fell. They gone fell. Let's, verse 4. And when they arose early in the next morning, there was what? Dagon falling on its face to the ground before the ark of the Lord. The head of Dagon and both the palms of its hands were broken off on the threshold. Only Dagon's torso was left of it. When you keep trying, when they keep trying, when they keep pushing you, this is what will happen to them. So stand. You have nothing to lose. God will fight your battles. Say, the Lord will fight my battles. In the name of Jesus, say anything that heckles me, anything that pushes me around, trying to take my favor, my glory. Say, Father, I stand on the word of God in the name of Jesus. Let the enemy of God's children fall in the name of Jesus. So now this is a competition between two gods. And they are, the Philistines knew that there is God, the God of Israel. They know. But because they have been demoted, they settle for lesser gods. People who worship uh, idol, idol worshippers are people who have been demoted. And then they settle with the lesser gods. They are upset that you are with God Jehovah. So they will come after you. But if you faint not, don't forget that they also had the same God before, but they were demoted. So now the battle, the test is now, okay, now that you have God Jehovah on your side, will you allow the, will you allow the worshippers of the lesser gods to come and make you a lesser God worshipper? That's the trial. That's the test. Amen? There are some people, their agenda is to make you to come to this level. Amen? And I pray that anybody trying, who has been set around you this season to bring you to their level, to bring your family down, in the name of Jesus, it will not stand. It will not come to pass in the name of Jesus Christ. First, they didn't accept defeat. They didn't know what happened. So they, they, they lifted their God up again and they placed it next to the Ark of the Covenant. The next day, said, God said, you know what? I'm going to break your limbs. <laughs> I, will, I will break your limbs. I will, I will, I will break your legs. I will break your, your arms. I will break it. The only thing the Bible said was left was torso. What is a torso? Aha, uh -huh, this part. Aha, uh -huh. so the legs are gone, the head is gone, the legs are gone. It's just there. <laughs> Hallelujah. May God make your enemies immobile. May they not follow you. May they not speak into, their, into your life in the name of Jesus. So the head is gone, so they can't speak again. There are some people, they speak negative into your lives all the time. You pay the phone call, everything they are saying is to discourage you. You finish and you are, you are numb. Virtue has departed. But today, may God give you the grace to be wise, the wisdom to discern, that you are not lured to a place of disadvantage, that you are the one that God is going to prepare and use for a time such as this. If you believe it, put your hands together for the Lord. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's look at verse 5. Therefore, neither the priest of Dagon nor any who, who come into Dagon's house tread on the threshold of Dagon in what? As to, to what? To this day. God made the place desolate, empty, that they, they don't even believe that there is, there, is a, there is a presence there. Amen? Because when God is upset and he proves his power and authority against the enemy, it's just like the land that was, that was bought by the, by, 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 by the money that Judas received by selling Jesus Christ. That land that was bought, it is believed that up to today, nothing good can, be, can, can come on that land. And today, there are some mountains in Israel today that God manifests his power. Today is just an empty, empty, dry mountain. As if God did not show up there before. Am I speaking to somebody? So when the glory of God is upon you, don't take it for granted. When God is preparing you to do something, don't take it for granted. Because it's the same God that called you, it's the same God that can fire you. Because the moment the helpers stop helping you, you are done. The moment the words started, like the words that are coming to you cease coming. And now everything you hear is criticism, ju ch ch chastisement, judgment. Then you know that something is about to happen. The moment, the very moment that Eli received the fresh word from the young prophet Samuel from God, that was the end of him. Because all the time it was good things. But one day, he received one word, and that was it. Let us fear God. Let us preserve the grace he has given unto us. The Bible says we should fight our, our salvation with what? Fear and trembling. You want to succeed. You want to break through. You want to be healthy. You want to be an overcomer. You want to build for the kingdom of God. So there will be contention. There are those who are designed to make you fail. But you must know how to deal with them. How to work with them. Use what? Wisdom. May wisdom not depart from you and I. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Say so wisdom will not depart from my life. From my mouth. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Any questions so far? Any questions? Are we good? Are we good? So now, Eli is dead. The two sons are dead. Phinehas' wife has given birth. Given birth to a son. Called the name of the son, God had departed. The glory is gone. But what happened? The glory that they said is gone is now kicking butt. <laughs> At the shrine of the gone. Huh? What God did not do during the battle, God is now doing. Fighting the God that helped them. That look, I just allow you to punish my people because they were in disobedience. By you, you are a lesser God to me. You can't even face me. I'll break you into pieces. Anything lesser than God, contending with you and I, let them be broken into pieces. Oh, you are not saying amen. Say anything lesser than God. Fighting my life. Fighting my family. Fighting our leaders. Fighting the members of this church. The affiliate churches. The visitors. Those who are in this region. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Say, we disarm them. We disengage them. In the name of the Lord Jesus. You see, why do we speak like that boldly? Because we believe the word of God. Why do we speak with such authority? Because you wait for the spirit to give you access that say it. You don't just say it. Hallelujah. You don't, you have, you see, when you are making declarations and decrees, you have to be very careful. You have to be very, very, very careful. So that's why imitation, you have to be very careful who you imitate. Else, 
your ribs will be broken. <laughs> I'm telling you, because we believe in this strong prophetic decrees and all that. You don't take the name of the Lord in vain. You cannot command God. You can't command God. It is God that gives you permission to speak on his behalf. So until he gives you green lights, you can't. So you wait. They that wait upon the Lord. I have the natural word, the written word. But I'm, I'm waiting for the spirit behind the word to now permit me, to lead me. Because God, God's glory did not manifest for Israel to win the war, they've now concluded, concluded that God had departed, the glory had departed. But the glory is now manifesting in the camp of a, a, a God, a lesser God. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 6, 1 Samuel chapter 6. 1 Samuel chapter number 6, verse 20. To 21. First Samuel chapter 6. So we are we are establishing the rise, the birth, the rise, the call of Samuel, what happened for him to occupy his seats. What happened? So are we following the, the story so far? We are, we are we are establishing. So when you want to become uh, at this time, the Bible says, when we were, we were reading the Bible, the Bible didn't tell us that Samuel, uh, Samuel himself didn't even know uh, that it was God. Even though he was just living a good life and doing everything in the house of God and all that, he, he never heard the voice of God. He was not called yet. Amen? So here we are saying that, and the men of Beth Shemeth said, who is able to stand before this holy Lord God, and to whom shall it go up? From us, So now they realize that the Ark of the Covenant in their camp is bringing sickness, disease, problems, and all that. So they say, look, let's, let's take it back. Let's return it. Because every house that hosts the Ark of the Covenant, trouble comes. Every city that hosts the Ark of the Covenant, trouble comes. So let us return it. There are some people, they don't know how to handle you. There are some people, they are trying to figure you out. They can never figure you out because the glory of God is upon you. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, may I continue to be a mystery in the camp of the enemy that whatever that is mine, say, this season, I will not lose. It will not be taken away from me. Say, I will discover, I will discover great things. I will discover my source of joy, my source of peace, Say, I will settle in the land of the living. The Lord God Almighty will bless me in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. 21. So they sent messengers to the what, inhabitants of what? Kejath. Is that right? Jerem saying, the Philistines have brought back the ark of the Lord. Come down and take it up with you. How many of you believe that there will be a return? Return of goodness. Return of good news. Return of helpers. Return of your sight. Return of your hearing ears. Return of decreeing things and it is coming to pass. Return of going out and coming back with victory. Return of that favor. Return of that grace. Return of that confidence. Return of that boldness. In the name of Jesus. Sometimes Ago, you used to be very bold and confident. You enter offices and you talk before you, 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 you come out. You have talked to the manager. You have talked to the CEO. They kind of like you. They like your ideas. And now, you are timid to even go to Burger King for application. Faith. Faith. It's a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things. When that grace comes upon us, there are certain things I tell people that me, I don't want, I'll pray, pray for me every day that I should not boast and I should not be arrogant. Because everything that I have received and any breakthrough that when I take pen and paper and I write it down, I realize that it was a spirit that visited me, gave me that favor. Sometimes you, you can behave like you don't know what you are doing. 
some, some spirit of meekness will enter into you as if speaking one sentence is a problem for you. Because the, the, the spirit will arrest you that it's not what you say. It is me doing it for you. Sometimes you can be qualified for not speaking. You can be qualified for not applying the thing well, making a lot of errors and mistakes on the application form. But it is not how good you feel the form. It is the favor of God. The favor of God. The favor of God. Least you and I boast. Hallelujah. Least you and I what? Boast. There are some exams you write, you can come back and be chewing the, the back of your pencil. I feel this one. I feel, and then the exams will come and you are passed. Like, what, what happened? What, how did I pass this one? Huh? How, how did I pass this test? Because I didn't study. I didn't even understand the questions. I was just, I was just writing something. I didn't, want to be, I didn't want people to look at me that I didn't study. So I'm also writing. And then the thing came and you passed. May the Lord qualify you. May the Lord favor you. May you move from grace to grace. Victory to victory. Favor to favor. Breakthrough to breakthrough. In the name of Jesus. Say, I'm standing on a land that the Lord has blessed. Oh, you are not stepping as if God has planted your feet and you are deeply connected and this year you are going higher. In the name of Jesus. Say, I am planted. By the Lord God Almighty. Say, I will go higher. Higher, higher. Like the eagle of God. Say, I shall see far. I will discover great things. Any hidden thing that will favor me, my family and generation. Say, I shall discover it. Say, I shall discover it. By the grace of God. By the spirit of the living God. I will, I will be a discoverer. In the name of Jesus. How many of you want to be discoverers? I'm telling you. Sometimes pray that, Father, let the grace of discovery come upon me. What others cannot see, may I see. And when I see, may I rest not until I dig it out and I find it and I discover it. Hallelujah. Don't just be a seer. Be a discoverer. Huh? Be, I can stand here and I see the pagoda. I can see, but I cannot describe what is there because I've never been there. So I, a discoverer is someone who can go, who can make the hypothesis, go there, take the field trip, go there, do the research, and see how it was built, who built it, why it is there, what are the uh, advantages of it. And lay a claim to that theory. You have to lay a claim to what you have done, what God has done through you. You have to lay a claim. So when people are coming to snatch it from you and say, hey, I patent this one. The blood has sealed it for me. It is for me and my descendants. There are some things that are for you and your descendants. There are some what? Things that are for you and your descendants. Hallelujah. Verse 22. They are busted. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Then the men of what? Kedja, Jerem, came and took the ark of the Lord and brought it into the house of Abinadad on the hill and consecrated Eliza, Eliza, his son, to keep the Ark of the Covenant. You see what they did? When they brought the Ark of the Covenant and they took it to a particular place, and the name, the person was who? The house of who? who? Abinadad. On the hill, and consecrated Eliza, right? His son to keep the Ark of the Covenant. What did they do? They just didn't give it to him. They just didn't say that, look, your son is the first son. Let him watch the Ark of the Covenant. The Bible said they consecrated him. They prepared him. They set him apart. 
And they said, you will keep the ark of the covenant. How are you preparing to host the holiest of the holy? How are you preparing? How are we preparing ourselves so that the, the power that we want, the anointing that we want, the anointing, the description of the anointing is holy. Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost. The Bible said he, they consecrated him to just watch the Ark of the Covenant. Am I, am I, am I speaking to somebody? Just to watch, just to be at the place where the Ark of the Covenant is, you are consecrated. How much more, how much more someone who represents Jesus Christ? How much more someone who represents God? Because the Ark of the Covenant represents the glory of God. So now to be in the presence, to be in that environment, you must consecrate yourself. Our father Moses taught us one thing the other day. When he met, when he, when he was at the place where God was, he said, the land you are standing on is a holy land. Take off your shoes. What is our attitude towards the things of God? Our attitude towards the place of worship. Our attitude towards the word of God. One dangerous thing, especially when you are reading the New Testament, Jesus is talking, one of the dangerous things that you can shake you to the core is when you don't understand what he's talking about. Until you read the, the bottom of it and he said, this parable means this. And you realize that it's so far apart. Am I making sense to you? Have you, have you? have you come to that knowledge of humility and fear that you read about a seed, a planter, a farmer? And then you think that, oh yeah, I have corn seed here. I'm going to plant and I'm going to stake it because I did a little agric and they need sun, sun. No. And then all of a sudden you say, all these things represent the kingdom of my father. And you're like, what the shock? I miss it. How can seven skinny fat, seven skinny cows and seven fat cows got something to do with planting, lean season, and what? Bumper harvest. Huh? How? Can that be until God reveals? Hallelujah. Joseph told us the other day, dreams come from God. Interpretation of dreams come from God. Some of us, you can see something and you go and sleep and then you see the thing in dream and then you get up with your own interpretation. When you get up and you have deep dreams, you can tell. You can tell that this one is God. And there are some dreams, when you dream it, you can... You can, you can say, oh, this one is the food that I ate last night. <laughs> Have you been there before? You have some dreams that say, this one, I'm not going to write it down. <laughs> this one is not serious. But there are some dreams you get up and you know that this one, God has visited you. How do you go about it? Some of you, you are sitting on certain dreams that are so prophetic, so deep, and you've not shared it with nobody. It's very deep. But let God help you to know the time, the maturity of that dream. And if it's not going to happen in your lifetime, in your generation, write it down. Make sure you pass it on. Because some of the dreams, eh, you, are not, you and I, we are not going to see it. Though. It's not us that is going to manifest that glory. No, it's not us. So make sure you write it down and you pass it on. Somebody will see it one day that God has spoken to my grandmother. And it hasn't, there are some treasures hidden in certain families somewhere that nobody knows. Except the one who has it. It's not only spiritual gifts. Sometimes it's physical gifts. Somebody is sitting on some will that has money, but will not tell nobody. Because there are conditions to it that don't tell nobody till the fourth generation. So when your time is up, pass it to somebody. The criteria for passing it on is a son who will be born with these features and characteristics. When you discover that, even if the child is 10 or 15 years, let that person become the custodian of it. Some of us, our tribes back home is like that. You see some grandmother sitting there working with steak and all that, struggling to eat. That is the one holding the, the whole generational gold, sitting under some bed. Or dig some small hole, put a mud carpet on it, sit on it. Doesn't go anywhere. But that treasure is there. And everybody's broke. Everybody is begging for food. 
People are going to prison, but that grandmother will never say that there's treasure there. Ezekiel 37. Do you think that that thing happened during the days of Ezekiel? No. But the Bible says he saw, what did he see? He saw dry bones. And the Bible says that the Lord came to him and said, speak over these dry bones. And he started speaking because he said, speak. You don't speak until God commands you to speak. Hallelujah. So that's why some decrees we make, nothing is happening because we've not been authorized to decree. And that's when the reaction comes. That's when the battle comes. Then, then, then you see the lesser gods are now contending with you. Because they've now realized that you've also taken the name of God in vain. So you are now like them. So now they will come and buffet you. Am I speaking to somebody today? Satan is very happy when you realize that you are also behaving like him. He's very happy because he failed and God punished him. So when God chooses you and I to represent him, he's waiting for you to make the same mistake so that you go, ah, God, didn't I tell you? Huh? But today in the name of the Lord Jesus, every grace of God upon your, le- your head, let God give you grace and mercy that you will not walk away from it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. They say he was what? Consecrated. Amen? He was what? Consecrated. He was what? Consecrated to watch what? The Ark of the Covenant. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go to the next one. Verse 3. And now, and Samuel spoke to all the house of Israel, saying, If you return to the Lord with all your heart, then put away the foreign gods and the Astoreth from among you and prepare your hearts for the Lord and serve him only, and he will deliver you. Serve him only. Serve him only. So things that caused Israel to forfeit the glory was that they were, they loved God all right, but they were also entertaining other gods. Amen? The first speech Samuel made for him to become the head, now Eli is gone, is to return Israel back to God. And he's making it emphatically clear that now Get rid of all the other gods. There are some tribes that you have become friends with. There are some cultures that you have, and because of emotions, you you now want to entertain their beliefs and traditions, and now you have messed with your identity. Am I speaking to somebody today? We don't have to say in 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 the name of niceness and compromise our identity as Christians. We don't have to. I can dress like, like, like a European. I can dress like a Chinese, but they, they are God. They are God. How many of you have watched the new British prime minister, the English before? They are very, very, they are very funny. Every other month, there's some new prime minister. If you throw a party, they can kick you out. Just a party, <laughs> you are out. So within a short period of time, we, they have... They, a lot of them. And the new one that comes, you see that in the, in the, in the entrance to where the prime minister lives, he's putting some, some, some images there because that's his belief. That is his belief. That's his belief. Can I say that again? That is his belief. God is saying, through Samuel, that let go of all other gods and serve only God. No matter how nice they are to you, no matter how they sound better, the call of God upon your life, the day of your salvation, who showed up? Hello? Am I speaking to somebody? Who delivered you? Is it God? Is it the Holy Ghost? Is it through Christ Jesus Christ? 
Why do you entertain other beliefs and practices? Anything as believers, as Christians, anything that is not recognizing Jesus Christ, following the teachings of Jesus Christ, acknowledging God as the only God that we must serve, that we only do lip service about God, but so settle on the lesser gods, it's a dangerous place to be. Hallelujah. I love the speech of this young prophet. Prepare your heart for the Lord and serve him only. And he will deliver you. How many of us want to have that boldness? Young man, you have arrived and you see how your fathers have fallen. And you have the, now you have the opportunity to represent the kingdom of God and bring your families to God. Bring your nation back to God. What speech will you give? What will be your first sermon? Huh? What will be your first sermon? To appease them? To entertain so even our generation now, some of the cultures in the church is not of God. It's not pleasing unto God. Because it's a culture that the youth and then this is what is going on. Is it God? Is it pleasing unto God? Am I speaking now? And we have allowed it. We have allowed it. And those people you are considered, they don't love God. They don't want to submit. They don't want to obey God. But they, they have introduced some culture to the church that is trending. That is what? Trending. Let there be a battle right now and see if one of them will be able to stand. If one of them will be able to stand. Israel still felt that the glory was still there. They took the Ark of the Covenant. Then God didn't do anything. They, they lost, thousands of them died. They lost the Ark of the Covenant. Then when they were not there and the Ark of the Covenant was in the enemy's camp, then come and see how God manifested. When the people were not there, God manifested that you, can, you cannot equate me with this kind. I gave instruction to Moses to carve this, this, this ark. I gave instructions, everything written on this tablet that is in the ark of the covenant. I, the Lord, this is my word. I don't know what you are following. I don't know what your heart desires. I don't know what you are chasing. But if you chase anything, chase things from the mouth of God concerning his identity, concerning what he wants you and I to do. If you desire those things, God will be closer to you 24-7. If you desire God, if you desire the ways of God, and you, are not, you will want to say, God, disconnect me from my generation that is perfecting the gospel of Jesus Christ. Disconnect me from the tradition of my generation that undermines the glory of God. Hallelujah. Will you be that young prophet called Samuel whose first speech was to return Israel back to God? Can you imagine young person? These are thousands of people, millions of people, great educated people, PhD holders, doctors, I mean like great people who have seen it all. Your, your word to them was that Return to God. Let go of that. and let, let, uh, We are closing. But look at what he, do, he, he did. Prepare your hearts for the Lord and serve him only and he will what? Deliver you. Number four. From the hand of what? The Philistines. Number four. So the children of Israel put away the, the what? The bales or the bales and the ast asteroids and served the Lord only. So are we going to what? What is our attitude towards instructions, towards things that can save us from premature death and shame? This is a young boy saying that what? Bring all the idols that you have. Bring them. Everybody obeyed. In our generation today, midweek service, the question is asked that the things that you have, the hard desire that you have, the mindset that you have, the attitude that we have. God is saying, I don't like it. Bring it and I will burn it and I will now be your God. You are saying, no. No. I won't. I won't bring it. I will not submit that. You have no idea what I've been through. I will not let go of my anger. 
I, 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 want to, I want to prove a point. I will not let go of that. I want to show them something. I also want to prove that I, I, am, very, I am very good. I'm very educated. I also want to prove a point. But Samuel is saying, bring it. Bring it. It's not about individualism. It's about Israel. The anointing is for, not for one person. It's for who? Israel. It's for generation. It's for what? Generation. Number five. And, and someone said, gather all, all Israel to what? Mizpah, and I will pray to the Lord for you. Then the second thing is what? You, you pray, prayer. Bring the other gods. Surrender. Worship only one God. The second thing they did was what? Pray. Number no, six, what? So they gathered together at Mizpah, drew water, and poured it out before the Lord, and they what? Fasted that day. So the essence of fasting, the proper way, is when you let go of all the negativity. You let go of all other belief system. You disconnect yourself from some people, some, some things. Then you are, you are on the fast. You don't fast when you are still holding on to some things and expect, expect God to come through for you. It's not happening. The reason why we are fasting, we are fasting, we are fasting, and nothing is happening is because of this. You see proper fast. Proper fast is when they repented and they brought all the lesser gods, all the things holding them back. The things that caused them to lose the battle and all the men, thousands and thousands of men lost their lives like we are experiencing in our generation today. Thousands and millions of men are locked up in prison. And half of them today, they are, they are going through major issues. There are only few that are there today. And say, so how do we reverse that case? He said, bring the belief system. When the men were not there, when the father was not there, when our mothers were not there, what did we resort to? What did we take solace in? What became our belief system? When we are down, do we resort to divination? When we are down, do we, do we, do we go to the witch doctors? When we are down, do we wear things around our wrists for, for good luck and charms and all that? Do we resort to those things? It's sad today that people are wearing things around their wrists, their legs, and all that, saying that this is a good luck. God is saying, bring them. And there is only one God. And you don't create any image. You don't take the name of the Lord in vain. Is God helping us tonight? So they gathered together at what? Mizpah drew water and poured it out before the Lord. And they fasted that day and said, and, and, and said there, we have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the children of Israel at Mizpah. They confessed. There's one thing that is missing in our vocabulary today as Christians is confession. We don't want to even confess to each other and say, bro, I'm sorry, man. Sister, I'm very sorry. I misled you. What I did was wrong. That will take burdens away. That will take stress away. That will take confusion away. That will let go of darkness. Because if you are not doing that, you walk in darkness and you don't know you are walking in darkness. And there are times you can tell, you can speak, to, you can tell yourself that, no, I'm walking in darkness. You can tell. If you are in darkness, you know. If you are in light, you know. You are always heavy. You are, there's always tension. The Spirit of God will be convincing you. You know that you are walking in darkness. Hallelujah. Say, Father, have mercy upon us. Oh, say it like you mean it. Say, Father, have mercy upon us. Say, Father, have mercy upon us. Say, Father, have mercy upon us. Say, Father, have mercy upon me. Deliver me from the camp of the wicked. Say, any path that I'm on, as a result of this belief, in the name of Jesus, say, have mercy in the name of Jesus and make me a believer. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. They confess. Because of time, I'm going to let it go. But one of the things that Samuel did was that he now took them to battle. Because now the ark has re returned. 
And then the son of Abinadad has now been consecrated towards the ark. So the right people before them, they went to the first battle that they lost the battle. Who was watching the, the ark? Phinehas and who? His brother. Right? Because they were not right with God, now God caused them to lose the battle. But the ark has returned. And now somebody has co been consecrated to be watching the ark. And now for the first time, Samuel got up and now taking his rightful position to be the next king, the next judge of Israel. Because he followed the right procedure, the protocol, spiritual protocol, preparing the heart of Israel for God to forgive and for God to return and for God to lead them again. Put your hands together for the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Are we blessed tonight? Any questions? Any contribution? <laughs> Anybody want to say something? Contribute? Question? Say that again. God bless you too. Amen. Can we all stand? God is good? All the time? God is good? All the time? So you see that the start of Samuel's ministry. His first speech was to gather Israel, for Israel to repent, to confess, and then the next thing he did, he sacrificed. And then he led them to the war, and they won. What will be your first message? You will preach, you will share, when giving a platform. Will it be, I'm anointed, I'm gifted, I can do it by myself? Or you return those people to God. You tell them to repent. You tell them to change. Or you let them just accept you and reject God. That's why sometimes one of the cases upon our head today is that we talk about us, how anointed we are, how powerful we are, and we don't return the people to God. Because we are also fallen angels. Fallen. Fallen angels are those who take the glory and don't give it to God. Fallen personalities are those who don't send people to Christ for Christ to intercede. They say, Hebrews 7, they say he's in heaven making intercession. So he's sending you to come and redirect the people to him so that he can take them to God. They say, if you deny me before men, I also deny you before my father. So the day will come that he said, I cast out demons, I did this, I, said, I don't know you. Because the people who are perishing, all I wanted you with the anointing and grace was that you lead them to God. You lead them to Christ. Put your hands together and let's celebrate God. Amen. How many of us want to be soul winners? How many of us want to point people to God? How many of us want to tell people that what you are doing is not good? Repent and let go of the other gods, other belief system, and let's have only one God. Hallelujah. So that the glory will return to Redden. That the glory will return to our families. Glory will return to marriages. Glory will return to our children. Glory will return in the name of Jesus. Say return. 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 So we'll continue with the, the, the start of Samuel's ministry. But how many of you like the powerful sermon of Samuel? Hallelujah. Let's go and read that one. Amen. Go and study that one. So when we come next time, we'll continue. Please, if you don't have a ticket as a man, you are here. You are a suspect. <laughs> Felix, do you have a ticket? Oh, come. I'll get you a ticket. Hallelujah. Who doesn't have a ticket? Come and, come and get. Oh, Sister Rhonda, there are, some, there are some men in your family you have to get a ticket for. Huh? Sister Rhonda, you are busted. Lady J said you are busted. There are some.